Hello again. In my last video I showed you a little thing about menus, namely how I can make such funky exciting scroll menu pop up here and populate it with lots of icons. Most of these icons here, I just had them lying around. These are called beach icons by Dirko Vega. Uh, very nice. He has, I've got a couple of his sets, very very nice icons, generic icons. But these here, these are actually Sinti assets that I've turned into icons and I think I said I was going to show you how to do that and then I never did and it's one of those things I thought you know now that it's still fresh in my memory let me show you how I did indeed do that. So uh, these icons here they're transparent and I've basically taken them out of Unreal Engine and put them into Blender and uh, I just wanted to quickly show you that process. So um, from my assets pack here I think under HUD under icons these are just icons here and these are the ones in question the pepper icon potato icon and the tomato icon potato doesn't look much like a potato you really have to know that it's a potato but the tomatoes and the peppers they are um, they, they're all 3d objects and I grabbed them out of the set I'll show you how to do that and then I just imported the 2d images into Unreal Engine and you know using that but how do we take them out of Unreal Engine and how do we then deal with them inside of Blender well let's have a look at that so I'm using the polygon farm set from the wonderful people at Sinti so if I select that down here and then I search for the thing I'm interested in so let's say a carrot I'll go and look for a carrot and here are a few things if, if they're not big enough you head over to view options and just, uh, just crank them up a bit in case we have more so they give us several versions of each vegetable so one comes in a box and one is fully grown but has the leaves cut off and one has you know the, the leaves that are still on and these two well they're just about growing they're kind of carrots under the ground and then they also have a bunch of carrots and this is true for literally um, well any of the vegetables or any of the objects that are included with with this set so in order to get one of these out I can pick whichever one I like maybe the bunch of carrots here that's kind of nice uh, go and right click on it and then there's this thing that comes up called asset actions and that gives me an export option which is great so that works for most assets that are in Unreal Engine and if and in case you didn't know this anything that has been imported into Unreal Engine is no longer accessible in the file structure as an OBJ or an FBX. Everything is kind of turned into its own wrapper with usually with the .u asset extension. So that is not something you can't really look through the folder and say, well, I'll just go and copy paste that OBJ file or that FBX file or the, the texture file or whatever. Everything's kind of a U, UE asset under the hood. But we can get it out again. So including all your files and all that, we can get it out again by right clicking, heading over to asset actions, and then we're saying export. And that will now give us options as to how we'd like to export that. So I can choose OBJ or FBX. Either one will work fine. I might just stick with with uh, FBX in case it has rigging. I, I know this one doesn't, but you know, just in case. There's also uh, an Unreal Object Text and um, th those I don't really know what they are. But uh, FBX and OBJ I'm kind of familiar with. So I'll go and pick that. I'll put that into uh, my my folder here, which I'm going to call out carrot maybe there we go save and this comes up with a little export dialogue as in you know what am i doing here so i can specify uh, details i can even specify the fbx format i might just stick with 2013 i don't really know what the differences are i'm just going to go ahead export i haven't looked at the carrot yet so if i go and minimize everything whoops that's kind of me you shouldn't really see that uh, then i'm in blender here i've got a scene in blender already and this is how i've brought in all my other bits and pieces here so one is the potato one's the pepper i've set up a square camera for this and a bit of lighting and we're currently looking at this in the render view as it is so that's kind of nice i can go and make that invisible bring up the pepper and you know bring up the tomatoes so if I make all of these invisible and just go and import my carrot now, FBX, uh, there it is, carrot, import, then I see something like that. That's not what I had bargained for. It looks very different than all the other objects. And that's, of course, you know, on one hand, a material thing. There's also the fact that I'm rendering this with a transparent background. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. 
So this is how the object comes in. And it looks weird because not only do we get the bunch of carrots, let me go change over to the gray view here. That might be that might be nice. That might be easier. But we also get to see something else, and that looks like it's uh, some kind of a collision box or collision capsule here. Those are actually two objects, and one of them I can delete. So this is the these are the carrots, and this is the other thing that comes in there. It's called UCXSM prop carrot group. Don't really need that. So I'm going to press X, and gone it is. Now I'm left with my carrots. That is nice. So the carrots, they, if I look at them in the render view, they just look purple. And that's usually Blender's way of saying, hey, I don't have a texture for this. I don't really know what to do with that. And uh, with that selected on the shading tab, I can now go ahead and have a look at that material. Well, in fact, I'm going to have a look at all these materials here. I also need to go into this little ball icon down here. That's kind of the world icon. And in that, uh, I can pick a material. So this one's called Matte Polygon Farm 01.003, which is uh, the third material that gets imported this way. So if I was to begin here, I would have to map the correct texture onto this. And if I open that, Blender already tells me what it's expecting is something called Polygon Farm Texture 01. A dot PNG. I might just go and copy this because I already have this image, but you might not. So uh, the image is kind of referenced. If I go back into Unreal Engine, I can go and literally look for that file and see if it comes up. Maybe perhaps with the without the uh, without the A ending. No, it doesn't actually. Well, what a shame. They must have renamed it for the Unreal Engine release. Let's have a look on the bunch of carrots here. And if I go and double click it to open the static mesh in Unreal Engine, then I get to see what the Unreal Engine texture file used to be called. And that is mat underscore polygon farm. So it's a kind of a cool thing. If I go and uh, literally click that little browser icon here, I will get to see this in my Unreal Asset Browser. And that's a really handy thing to do. So I click on that and there it is. This is now the highlighted item. Whatever I've selected here, this works with, with any kind of editor. If you click that little hourglass or the little loop icon, it will then go and browse to that asset in your Asset Browser, in your Content Browser, which is great because this is the material that we really need. So now with it already selected and highlighted, I can just go do the same thing again. Right click, Asset Actions, Export. <laughs> awesome stuff. And uh, I will just call this Matt Polygon. Uh, I'll just call this my underscore Matt Polygon Farm, just so that I know this is the thing that I've just copied into here or pasted into here. I don't want to use the Unreal object text here. I would much rather use something else, but I guess I, I can't I can't use it because uh, that's the only option that I get here. Well, I managed to extract it earlier. I don't really remember how. I think I double click that. Yes, that is how I did that. I double click the material itself and it being a material description now leads me to a texture file what the material is using. So the material itself is kind of a complicated node setup thing. As you can see here, it has some other things plugged into other things. We're really only after the flat texture. And we can use the same trick again as I've used a moment ago. This is actually the texture. The other thing was the material on the object, if that makes sense. So once again, I can go and browse with a little loop icon to this asset, which is the flat texture. That is kind of what I'm looking for. And now I can go and say asset actions export. This gives me flat image options, which is now readable by Blender. So bitmap or a TGA file, even HDR file, PCX file even. I might stick with TGA and I'll call this once again, my underscore T polygon farm, only because I have one of those in my folder already. So I'm just gonna go and call it my T polygon farm, save that, and then go back to the Blender, where I can now open this it's already hooked up to the base color. So this is just an image that I need to open. Let's see if I can find my folder here, Unreal Export, my polygon farm thing. Open that. And 
that is now my object uh, properly textured in Blender. It is set up with a somewhat of a default material. So if you're not happy with the way things are going here, maybe one metallic and one specular is not exactly what I want. I don't really want metallic carrots, but I don't also don't want this to be on zero because that might just look too flat. So perhaps I'll put that to 0.3. Same with the specular, maybe 0.3 specular might be a better look for this cartoony acid or 0.6 perhaps. Sometimes we didn't have it in the carrots, but I did have it in the tomato plant earlier. Sometimes you may need a normal map, or sorry, an alpha map hooked up to this. If there is transparency in your object, usually what you can do is just grab the alpha value from the texture node and hook it up to the alpha value of the of the node here. So it looks like we don't have any transparency here, but there were some leaves in the tomato plant I had earlier that required that. So that's how you get an alpha value here and then literally it's just a matter of making sure it looks handsome in the camera setup so this is a bit uh, it's a bit big so i'll go and grab my carrots and size them up properly maybe make them a bit uh, bigger maybe smaller rotate them around uh, perhaps rotate them in the x a bit until your camera framing looks good you could also frame the camera it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter totally up to you I'll just go rotate this so that this looks nice as an icon. Make sure under film, I'm kind of in the way here. And I, uh, let's see if I go and make that window a bit smaller. There we go. Now I can be in vision and Blender's in vision as well. On the render properties in Blender, uh, select that under film, you'll find this little transparent option. And if you select that, you won't render any of the Blender background. Well, as soon as that's selected, the, the whole thing is going to be transparent. And then you can just go and render this thing out, render image, set the lighting and all that. I've specified uh, my render to be 128 by 128. You can also select something bigger. Maybe we'll go on 512 by 512. Depends really on how, how big your, uh, your thing needs to be. And there it is. That's a carrot icon. And I can now go and save that image out and import it back into Unreal Engine. And then that's my icon. And whatever adjustments you make here, that, that can come out of Blender. There might be even a way to do this inside Unreal Engine. I'm just more comfortable with doing it in Blender that way. And that is how I've made those little icons on the menu. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. I just thought I'd give you that little bit of background information because sometimes we just, we just want to do things without words and just icons might be exciting for any of your exciting menu needs. Create your own icon from Unreal Assets. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time on Jay's Farm. Take care. Bye-bye.